Hi, I'm Dr. James Sturm. I'm an interventional pain physician that practices in the St. Louis area. I founded Arch Advanced Pain Management. I'm creating some videos to place on YouTube to help educate my patients and other pain sufferers about some of the new or newer interventional techniques or methods to help get their pain under better control. I want to discuss in this video about compression fractures and vertebroplasty and kyphoplasty. Compression fractures and osteoporosis are very common in the United States and are, are becoming more frequent. Uh, there are at least 700,000 compression fractures in the United States. And they're occurring because a lot of our elderly have osteoporosis. This is a model produced by the Forteo company and shows osteoporosis. In our bone we have an outer surface and then we have a scaffolding or a type of structure. Patients with osteoporosis have a reduction in the number of these bony struts and reduced number of them. So they're thinner and not as many. This predisposes to patients uh, to have collapse uh, of the, the column of the vertebra. This is the spine of the vertebra, a base of the skull, the pelvis. This is where a patient's buttocks would be. This is towards the patient's front. This column of bone down the front portion is called the vertebral bodies. And this is the portion of bone that often collapses with patients who have compression fractures. The forces applied to these exceed uh, the bony struts and this portion collapses down. These can be very painful. I have been performing vertebroplasty and kyphoplasties for many, many years. I started practice uh, after completing my pain fellowship at the Cleveland Clinic in 1996. I hate to admit it, but I used to dread referrals for compression fractures because the patients often did very poorly. Pain medications made the patients drowsy, constipated, and nauseated. These are fractures typically of the elderly. They're more common in females. Years ago, a technique was invented to place needles and inject polymethylmethacrylate, which is plexiglass. It was actually in the Battle of Britain in World War II that we discovered that plexiglass was biocompatible. Uh, the Spitfire uh, canopies were made out of Perspex, which is polymethylmethacrylate. A British ophthalmologist by the name of Sir Harold Ridley made the discovery. He went on to invent intraocular lens implants uh, based on uh, the polymethylmethacrylate and the biocompatibility. Your treatment options for a patient with a compression fracture are do nothing. Second option is place them in a back brace. Third option is to place needles within the body of the vertebra through the pedicle, this bony window, this bone right through here that you can access from the back and go to the front portion of, of the fracture of the vertebra and then place the polymouth methacrylate. And the fourth option is open spine treatment. These are often elderly, sick patients, and the open spine treatment uh, is at increased risk. I have braced many patients, and um, many of them are females. The braces tend to compress tissue such as the breast or their hips. Uh, patients do often Patients often do not like the back braces because they can be uncomfortable. The fractures can take anywhere between three to six months to heal. During that period of time, some of those fractures can go on to worsen. If they worsen significantly, then bone fragments can go in the spinal space, pinching spinal nerves. Very rarely, paralysis can occur um, from the fracture. The part, again, as I had mentioned, that breaks is the vertebral body. There's a portion of bone through here, it's called the pedicle. 
the spinal canal is through here, which the spinal cord runs. And then you have a nerve that exits above and below the pedicle. A needle can be placed down into the pedicle and into the body of the vertebra. This vertebra has a plastic uh, top to it so you can see uh, the needle entering into the vertebral body. And, and uh, no, normally there's not a plastic window. If the needles are advanced to the front portion of the vertebral body and the cement's injected, that's called a uh, vertebroplasty. If the needles are placed in the back part of the vertebral body and a hole is created by a balloon or a mechanical device, the balloon is placed in there, it's expanded, that's called a kyphoplasty. Both have advantages and disadvantages. I believe that kyphoplasties have less cement leakage. Uh, the cement is injected into the vertebral body. It has about a 15 minute working time. The cement is very similar to an epoxy that hardens. The patients are, are left uh, in a position for the cement to harden after a vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty. Uh, the cement will get 90% of its strength in the first 60 minutes. I've performed hundreds and hundreds and probably over 2,000 vertebral body levels as of September 2013. I've been doing it for years and I stopped keeping count of the number that I've performed. Uh, the oldest patient that I've ever, ever performed this on has been 98 years of age. I've known other medical practices, uh, other practitioners of this technique that have done patients over 100 years of age. It's not a risk-free procedure, but it is a low-risk procedure. Cement leaking along the sides of the vertebra or in the disc space can be common in vertebroplasty as high as 40%. The majority of those patients, it's asymptomatic. It can leak back into the spinal space. That is possible, le uh, less likely, but it can occur. I use an x-ray machine while I'm placing the needles and the cement into the vertebral body. Uh, this, helps, does reduce the, this helps reduce the risk of leakage of the cement. Patients that have the cementing often can get pain relief in the first day, for a few, first few days, or in the first week or two after the procedure. The vertebra can break down into a wedge deformity. So instead of the ends of the vertebra being nice and parallel like this, they can uh, break down into an annulated form. This is the cause of Dowinger's hump in patients. A deformed or annulated vertebra in itself can be a chronic source of pain. There are some newer techniques out now to help open the vertebral body. Vertebroplasty in itself can help um, open up a vertebral body, especially if it's gotten too quicker. Kyphoplasty probably does a, a better job than vertebroplasty in making the end plates uh, flat. Uh, there, there's some other newer techniques, uh, one by spinology with the placement of cadaver bone and generating higher pressures within the vertebral body to help get the end plates uh, parallel again. For some patients, if the fractures have gone on for three months or longer, um, short of having open spine and reconstruction, uh, you cannot get the end plates uh, parallel again, flat again. For, for patients who have a fracture, it gives an indication that the quality of the bone is soft or have osteoporosis. When somebody develops two or three compression fractures, they're at very high risk of developing further compression fractures. Therapies such as calcium, vitamin D, can help reduce further bone loss, but don't really strengthen uh, the bone. The one therapy that seems to work better than anything else is a drug called Forteo. Forteo is a shot in the thigh or belly every night for two years. 
it will increase the bone hardness two and a half times at the end of two years. Uh, right now, nothing else out there works quite that well. Uh, the fractures don't stop at the spine. They can go to the hips and other different areas. Uh, these models are pro provided by the Forteo company, but this is from an actual patient who had osteoporosis. This is the same patient after two years, and the bone is harder. You have more of the trabecula, or the bony struts, and they're also thicker. Uh, this patient is at much less risk of uh, recurrent fractures than this patient. If the patients have had their bones hardened, they can be placed on a drug called bisphosphonates. Bisphosphonates can help reduce further bone loss. It is questionable whether uh, bisphosphonates can give good quality bone. Bisphosphonates can cause the loss of blood supply to the jaw, and you would lose essentially the jaw. Uh, it's called avascular necrosis of the jaw. Forteo can elevate the calcium level. Forteo, when it was given to laboratory rats at three to 60 time doses, the humans would, re humans would receive, there was an increased risk of bone cancer. Uh, Forteo has been used worldwide. It is thought that Forteo in humans has no increased risk of bone cancer. Uh, as far as I'm aware of, there's been one published case of osteosarcoma or bone cancer in individuals receiving Forteo. There's a risk of performing uh, vertebroplasties. The cement can leak. There's a risk of infection, spinal fluid leak, nerve injury, paralysis. Um, I've never had a major complication, knock on wood, on my patients. Um, there are certainly uh, published reports, however. I believe patients at a minimum should be braced to help reduce the risk of further breakdown of the vertebral body. Um, as our population ages, I believe this is going to be a more common problem. This is uh, Dr. James Stern uh, talking on osteoporosis and compression fractures um, from Arch Advanced Pain Management in St. Louis.